there are four ways that we can increase our ability to lift a heavier weight. These are an improvement in technique, an improvement in intermuscular coordination, an improvement in voluntary activation, and an improvement or a change in the muscle tendon unit properties. When we improve our technique, we increase the amount of weight that we can lift, but we don't actually change the amount of force that we put through the floor. This is most easily understood if we think about the deadlift. Novice deadlifters often allow the barbell to drift too far forwards of them when they're lifting, and this makes the lift a lot harder because the moment arm between the barbell and the hip joint gets longer. The same amount of force is exerted through the ground, but the amount of weight on the bar must necessarily be less, and this would make us assume that they were weaker than they actually are. Similarly, if we can improve our technique in a deadlift or bench press exercises, then we can increase the amount of weight that we can lift, but this does not necessarily mean that we have improved our strength in our muscles, it just means that our ability to perform the exercise, our coordination pattern, our bar path, our efficiency has improved. When we perform an exercise, most of the force comes from our prime mover or agonist muscles, but at the same time, our antagonist muscles, the opposing muscles, are also producing some force. And this seems to serve at least two different purposes. One is to increase the joint stability and the other seems to be to contribute to our balance. However, the more force that the antagonist muscle produces, the less turning force that the whole joint can produce when the agonist muscle is activated. This means that people who have a high level of antagonist muscle activation during an exercise will appear to be weaker than those who have a smaller amount of antagonist muscle activation. And similarly, if we can reduce the amount of antagonist muscle activation, the amount of force the antagonist muscle produces during an exercise, then we can actually become stronger in that exercise, even without improving the amount of force that the agonist muscle produces. The main contributor to our ability to lift a heavy weight is the force produced by the agonist or prime mover muscles. Our ability to produce force by these muscles is partly determined by the amount of voluntary activation that we can produce. If we are able to voluntarily activate all of the motor units within that muscle, then we can produce a lot of force. If we can only voluntarily activate a small proportion of the motor units in that muscle, then we will be able to produce much less force. Some people are able to voluntarily activate far more motor units in a muscle than others. Often, trained people can activate more motor units than untrained people. Similarly, if we are able to increase the number of motor units that we can voluntarily activate in a muscle, then we will increase our strength after a long-term training program. The other major factor that determines our ability to produce force with our agonist muscles is the physical properties of the muscle itself. We tend to think of muscle size as being the only physical property of muscles that matters for producing force, but actually there are several factors that contribute to force production. Those include muscle size, but also tendon stiffness, muscle fascicle length, penation angle, the moment arm length of the muscle, the fibre type of the muscle and the ability of the fibres within the muscle to transmit force laterally. We also once thought that muscle fibres could increase their myofilament packing density. That is, we thought that it was possible to have myofibrillar rather than sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. However, because of a number of studies showing that single fibre force per unit area does not actually increase after strength training, and because of other studies showing that the number of myofibrils inside a fibre changes proportionally with the size of the fibre, we now think this probably isn't the case. And actually, when a muscle changes force relative to its size, that actually happens mainly because of an increase in the ability of the fibres to transmit force laterally. 
but however the physical properties of the muscle change, it remains a very important way in which muscle force increases after strength training and therefore the way by which we improve our ability to lift a heavy weight. So why is this important? Well it's important because it tells us that the ability to lift a heavy weight is not the same thing as the ability to produce muscle force. And it also tells us that improving our ability to lift a heavy weight with a long-term strength training program is not the same thing as improving our ability to produce muscle force with a long-term strength training program. In fact, we can group these four factors into two different categories. The first two categories, technique and intermuscular coordination, are not really transferable from the exercise in which they were developed. So if we improve our technique and improve our one repetition maximum on the deadlift or squat, that doesn't change our strength in another exercise or another movement. It simply improves our ability to perform that exercise. Similarly, because intermuscular coordination is very closely related to balance, and balance is not at all transferable between different exercises or movements, we know that if we improve our intermuscular coordination after strength training, that won't really transfer very well from the exercise that we've been doing to another exercise or to a sporting movement. In contrast, if we improve our ability to voluntarily activate the motor units in a muscle, or if we improve our muscle tendon unit properties, if we change some of those properties so that they can produce force to a greater degree, then we will be able to use that strength in a different exercise or in a sporting movement.